Hey guys, it's Matho here once again, and I've got a pretty serious build to show you this time around. We got ourselves some cast on crit bow, volatile dead, and detonate dead. Now, this is a build I've been thinking about doing for the past league or two. Haven't really thought about exactly how I want to execute it, but um, the fact that Necromancer Corpse Packed Ascendancy Jewels aren't too expensive, it was 5x for both of them, um, meant that I could take it on as an elementalist and then um, just steal the Necromancer Ascendancy, and it's been working out pretty freaking good. So the build that I wanted to try specifically was some bow cast on crit and then incorporate some detonate dead. I also tried out some volatile dead and it feels really good for clear, and in the end that's where we've landed. Kind of a hybrid situation where both are going to be proccing quite profusely during clear, and then probably swapping into just pure detonate dead for a single target. Um, this isn't using any sort of spectres, at least not at the moment. I've got to like level 91, 92, some shit like that. Haven't used any bug spectres or anything. And the plan was to kind of probably never do that. Um, just because these skills don't really need that level of bugged interaction or overpowered shit. They're just good by themselves. Uh, but if I feel like I really need that for some Ubers or some shit, maybe I'll try it out. I don't know. Uh, either way, so far, all you're seeing here is Rain of Arrows running around, critting things, and then triggering um, Volatile Dead, as well as triggering Detonate Dead. And as well as that, we've also got an Asenath's Chant, which um, every bow cast with 0.3 cooldown, 0.3 second cooldown, every bow attack, um, you are putting down, in this case, Desecrate. So Desecrate lays down the foundation for your detonates, and um, then once you start killing stuff, you can explode other corpses as well. Uh, but that's basically the interaction. It's pretty simple uh, at its surface. It doesn't take too much to get going early on, but you can, of course, min-max these types of builds to quite higher extremes. And I'll show you how to craft, or how I crafted my bow, and how you can craft cast on crit bows pretty reliably. Just takes a bit of um, capital to get started basically but so far for what this is um, an elementalist you know nothing too speedy because there's no real speed portion to this um, just using elementalist for golems and for some exposure and some area for what it is so far it's been incredibly fun i've gotten through to like low level 90s very fast and just playing more than usual because it just feels good running around and blowing the entire screen up Granted, if your computer can handle it, because maybe it can't, I did have to, um, I think at some point, turn off regular Desecrate for Stygian Desecrate, and I think that felt a bit better on frames. I tried out some other Volatile Dead and uh, Desecrate, um, Detonate Dead, MTX, and yeah, they didn't feel great. So at the moment, I've just got two defaults on, but uh, there are others to try out and see how, how things go. Uh, it's a glorious mess, it's a lot of fun. I basically got to level 87, I think, without upgrading most of my gear, just because it didn't need upgrading, and I would have rather just mapped, so I just kept mapping for the fun of it. Uh, so it's been an absolutely brilliant build for mapping, probably the best build for the league for mapping, and hopefully it's the one that's going to help finish off some of my challenges. Um, and it's looking like it's ramping towards build of the league. It's just going to probably depend on um, a few of the like Ubers and stuff like that. But for fun purpose, I'd like to say it's already kind of managed to top that build of the league position. Now about bow cast on crit, like you can really do kind of anything. This was always going to be a fairly winning scenario for me. Historically, bow cast on crit is like a no lose situation where if I want to make a certain couple of spells work, bow cast on crit will get you there because the built in cast on crit and the bow is pretty powerful and you can make fairly good bows fairly reliably. And then Asenath's chant, the hat, will give you an additional either spell to use or some utility. So, by all means, you guys can um, think of other setups you might want to do with bow cast on crit. I've done most of them already at this point um, in the past so you can check out other ideas but if you're looking for kind of a no lose situation bow cast on crit some kind of spells that hopefully synergize together and then any countless number of ascendancies are going to work pretty well. Um, I was tossing up between assassin uh, maybe Inquisitor, but didn't really want to do yet another Inquisitor for cast on crit like this so I thought I'd try and um, branch outside the box a bit. This is the only piece of bossing I've done so far, just a quick little test. 
um, but we'll see a lot more in the future. Either way, let me um, rip into the character and show you what I've done to make this guy so far. So here is the current character, level 91. Yeah, it's gauntlet practice. Um, just, yeah. No, it's not gauntlet practice. Yeah, just kind of covering some of the bases of uh, jokes and shit. Because um, it's obviously not a gauntlet build, now is it? It takes a bit more work than that. Level 91, Elementalist. Um, not a huge life pool, but a decent bit of damage reduction. Um, I'm currently in the process of fixing my mana, and I think I've mostly got it fixed, so I don't know what my fifth flask is yet. But um, as you can see, the bow that we build around is just cast on crit bow. Uh, in this case, it does have minion damage, which is the main difference compared to conventional bows, because usually you, you get spell damage from essences. Uh, but it's a pretty damn nicely made bow. Basically, it's pretty easy to get a reliable enough outcome like this, except for the uh, additional crit mod, which just happened to roll nicely when I finished off the suffixes with a veiling. So before I do go any further, I will basically show you how to make one of these. And it's just more or less a bit of starting capital. Um, and I've made another one just before I actually started um, on this one. I made one with spell damage, but I realized that um, detonate dead. Uh, to scale both portions of it, you do want um, not pure spell damage. So detonate dead and volta dead has two portions to it. A, a spell portion and a corpse which is more like an elemental portion, um, and spell damage will only scale the first initial fire damage. If you have something like minion damage, um, which with this node turns into just damage, um, fire damage, elemental damage, then you will scale both at the same time. So I made this one with just some essences, um, and then I had to remake another one. And it's pretty reliable to get either one of these outcomes. It just takes a bit of money. So you grab yourself... Um, for us, in this case, feared essences and um, go to town on a bow. Uh, it needs to be shaped and, you know, I tried to grab a bone bow because uh, I thought it was a nice base. You could do pretty much anything, especially if you're going to go leadership's price in the end like I did. Uh, you can just do a thicket bow or grove just for lower dexterity um, purposes, which is why I've got one of these. Uh, use essences until you hit cast on crit. If you've hit cast on crit and there's no additional prefix, great. Um, that's a starting point and you want two suffixes on the bow at that point so that's pretty common it ends up happening every like 50 essences or so um, and then you roll cannot roll attacks from the bench if you've done that um, in a certain way cannot roll attack modifiers if you've done that in a certain way um, and you've only got one spare prefix basically, then whenever you exalt it or use your bestiary um, to save on costs, if you'd rather use the add a mod to a shaper item, whenever you um, put on an additional prefix, it's going to land on uh, damage penetrates, plus one gems, physical as extra cold, um, and I think also maybe frenzy on kill going to land on one of those outcomes um, pretty much every time. For my purposes, if it landed on something like Frenzy on Kill or the Fizz's Extra Cold, I'd just try and annul it back off. And if it worked out, great, I'd try again. If it didn't, well, I'd keep Essence spamming. Um, but you can keep those Fizz's Extra Cold ones as cast on crit bows for other things if you'd rather. So you can just keep going like that until it works out. If you've got three prefixes on there, well, I guess you're going to have to annul um, something that isn't the essence in the cast on crit. And if it works out, you can proceed. If it doesn't, um, got to keep essence spamming. If you've got three prefixes and one suffix on there, you've got to do a bestiary prefix to suffix to hopefully get the one in three um, and then leave yourself with a bow that has two suffixes, two prefixes. That's basically the dream scenario, because if you have um, a bow with a spare suffix, when you're doing this cannot roll attack and then slam sort of situation, you can slam a bunch of suffixes you don't give a shit about um, accidentally. So what you're looking for is definitely um, basically a full bow, except for a prefix, while having cannot roll attack on there, and then it's a fairly reliable outcome to get a bow that has something like this. Damage penetrates is fine, um, so is uh, plus one, though the damage penetrates should be better for our build, um, just because plus one doesn't scale the corpse portion of the skill, while um, we do kind of want to care about both. 
Uh, once you got the prefixes locked in, you then do prefixes cannot be changed, veil orbit, put something cool on there. Uh, I got lucky with getting a crit multi um, and power charge at the same time. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to get power charges anyway from Assassin's Mark, so it's not a big deal. Uh, basically, my bow just guarantees that it's got 28 crit multi more than the average bow. Otherwise, don't take this for a bow that's particularly insane. It's just, yes, it's good, but it's not unachievable and it's not that much better than a, re a reliable enough outcome for a bow. Uh, so the average bow is probably going to take you anywhere from like 5 to 10x um, just because it might take you a few essences, it might take you a few goes to get those prefixes, but then it does take... Um, at least a prefix cannot be changed veiling. It does probably take a cannot um, roll modifier, which is 1x. Maybe some slams, maybe some shaper slams, which are a lot cheaper. But uh, you could just get lucky with this one. This one actually just got the prefixes all done like that with a few essences. So I didn't even have to do the prefixes. I just did the suffixes. This one was very cheap to make. Anyway, those are cast on crit bows. I hope that's clear enough. And uh, that's basically been the system for crafting cast on crit bows for like four years now, so it hasn't really changed. We'll see if anything changes in future patches. Uh, aside from that, what else we got? Asinous chart, so trigger a socketed spell when you attack with a bow. So we've got our spell cascade, desecrate, and inspiration setup. Um, inspiration just to make it cost a bit less mana. So as you can see, every single time we attack, there's gonna be desecrate, spawning, and that is what helps us trigger all of our um, lovely detonate and volatile dead skills um, and then the rest of the gear like i've just tried to get some minus mana cost on both rings and that is what helps me with mana cost and that makes desecrate 12 mana um volatile dead 21 and then detonate dead 12 and i was running a mana flask up until now uh, but only just recently i've been trying to toy with reduced mana cost of skills and a crit flask and uh, when we press that one Basically, everything becomes almost free and we can sustain um, off of very little mana. But you could fix mana by either going Eldritch Battery. Um, you could just get a bit more mana nodes. You could um, get some mana gain on hit with your attacks. Uh, you could use a Mana Flask. All in all, it's all pretty doable and it doesn't seem to be too hard at the moment to fix mana. I'm going to be just toying around the last flask slot maybe i'll just keep mana flask instead and not worry about having to fix mana like this because it is a bit situational um otherwise this gear slot this is still nothing but i've just got exposure gloves for now i will be changing these gloves and uh this ring is temporary but minus mana cost is what we need and then i'm going to fill out suffixes with whatever else i want uh, this one just has stats this belt was just life stats and cooldown recovery craft for suffix um, these boots are just suffixes because i do need to balance some strength and then i locked in the suffixes and um, did a veil orb just for movement speed uh, over here just got a fractured quiver uh, and then you use Scorn Essences. If you use Scorn Essences on a Quiver, it's going to give you Global Crit Multi instead of Bow Crit Multi. So that's pretty much the best use of a Quiver that you can have for one of these builds. Uh, and then also Frenzy Charge on Crit. Uh, and then only recently, for the past like level or two, I've managed to balance Leadership's Price for the first time in my build ever. I've never used one of these before, um, disclaimer. And it is a bit annoying having to balance your stats. So I had like 300 int and I had like 150 strength and I just made sure that when I was buying gear pieces, I was getting a decent amount of strength. And then I just had to divine um, and uh, catalyze one item to make sure the stats balanced. Once the stats are balanced, it means that we have um, Scorching, Brittle, and Sapping Conflux. That's these up here. Now, this differentiates from the Interrogation Jewel and um, Secrets of Suffering by making it so your fire damage, for example, can then apply a maximum amount of all of these. If you did the other way, like went Secrets of Suffering, um, with just my fire damage, I wouldn't be dealing any brittle. I'd need a little bit of cold damage and then how strong that brittle would be would be based off of my cold damage. And if I don't have much, it might be a weak brittle. With this thing, um, the real strong point is that my fire damage can then apply um, brittle based off of its kind of like ailment effect. So it should give me maximum like 
sort of ailment of all of these based just purely off of my fire damage, hopefully. And it's been working out pretty well and it just means that I pretty much don't need to worry about crit. So I can get rid of this crit craft and I got rid of my crit gem uh, up until like a level ago or something. I was using the crit strike gem and you absolutely should be doing that until you're comfortable enough to let go of the crit support. But um, pretty much whenever you get leadership's price is when that can work out. And then also just a basic chest that's got um, a bunch of life and some strength on it. This thing cost me 1x and then I finished off the implicits, which I wanted endurance charge uh, and determination just to get a bit thicker. So as you can see with all of my golems, uh, my buff effects and everything, I'm at 90% damage reduction. Um, I'm not very strong against elemental stuff. I don't have spell suppress. I've just got a bunch of regen and life gain on hit. Um, and that is all coming from... Not you. You. Uh, so I just grabbed a life gain on hit, watch as I, uh, and then determination on it for some extra fizz reduction. There's plenty of stuff you can grab as a secondary, but uh, in this case, it just gives me... Um, it just costs three exalts, and it's mostly for the sustain, but um, so far hasn't really been too important to have that sustain. You could go a more energy shield route if you want, like some CI, and do some life gain on hit with discipline, but uh, basically with the amount of stuff that we're throwing out, life gain on hit or ES gain on hit should be pretty powerful. Uh, stolen Corpse Pact from um, Necromancer. Cost 5x. Um... I mean, it's cool, but I don't think it's super important. A lot of my damage currently in this build is largely coming from um, just the front loaded hit. It's not strictly like corpse base, like those bugged detonate deads are going to be with the specters. Uh, and then I've grabbed a um, jewel for primordial bond, which gives me that there. Grabbed a megalomaniac that's got this, this, and primordial bond. I grab another megalomaniac with more primordial bond. Um, we do spec up here for spiritual aid. I do have an animus stone, so I can make sure to have all the golems up. And the passive tree is a bit fucked. Um, I wanted to kind of go this way and maybe two clusters. I wanted to go this way, this way. I wanted to do the whole um, impossible escape technology, but decided not to just to keep it a bit more accessible. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things you can do here. By all means, try and min-max if you want to, um, or take a, your own version with a different ascendancy, etc. Oh god, what else do I need to say? So my current supports are these two. They will alternate, but when you're like critting enough, it's just going to pop off a lot of the time. Spell Cascade, Awakened, of course. Uh, Rain of Arrows for clear, mass clearing. Anomalous Blast Rain for single target, which does cover enemies in Ash. Uh, it's pretty hard to beat Blast Rain for single target. It's just raw overlapping thing on one enemy is going to be super reliable and just proc your spells very cleanly. And then Divergent Inspiration up here. Uh, all my golems are just chilling here at the moment, not linked to anything. Uh, we then have Vitality, Determination, Herald of Ash, Precision, Flame Dash, Assassin's Mark, Defiance, Banner, Mark on Hit. Um, I'm still figuring out the links. Going an Elementalist means I'm super stressed on links, and that is the big downside. I would have thought I'd like to do like an unearthed totem or something to help keep up with the corpse demand because I don't think this is going to keep up with the corpse demand of this um, during boss fights. But we'll see what I can do and what I can figure out and uh, if there's any changes in the future. Otherwise, just diamond flask, silver flask, quick silver flask, and I'd say that's about it. So that's a basic template. The most important thing, just get yourself a bow, should take you a few exalts, and then like I was mapping off dog shit gear for just 15 levels and it was a dream hope you guys enjoyed the video and the um, crafting guide etc i'm a bit tired from talking so much already uh thank you very much for watching and see you next time